There are a lot of superhero couples out there that we wish existed. Shipping is commonplace when it comes to nerd culture, but often there's characters that we want to get together so darn badly, but they just never do. And sure, there's reasons as to why they don't, and maybe they have better pairings that end up being made into the actual storylines that we read, but still, still hurts our hearts a little bit. So today we are counting down our picks for the top 10 superhero couples that we wish existed. I've also asked some of our fellow hosts and editors to chime in on couples that they would love to see. So in other words, this list is pretty darn subjective. Meaning please stick around to the end and let us know who your top picks would be for couples that you wish existed. Cause let's all have an opinion. <laughs> Plus there might be some bonus content at the end of me just being me. So that might be fun. <laughs> so with that in mind, let's get to our list. Starting us off in at number 10, Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy. All right, so Harley and Ivy are a pairing that would have made the top spot on our list if it wasn't for the semi-recent announcement that the two are actually canon. Now we finally got to see them as a couple, but here's why they are on our list. That was cruelly whisked away from us, sort of, by their constant on and off again nature. We've yet to see them at their full potential as a couple, although the romance has been fully realized in some alternate universes. The two of them actually got married in Injustice 2, so that's pretty darn dope. But we kill to see a proper romance between the two of them on Prime Earth, and one in which neither of them are a crutch for the other. Imagine having them both fully realized, fully complex characters finally giving their relationship a proper solid go. Yeah, that's kind of the dream, isn't it? In at number 9, Kingpin and the Blob. This couple is courtesy of one of our editors, Dylan, who responded with this pairing as soon as I asked her office who they'd like to see hook up. Now, you may be wondering, Kingpin and the Blob, what? Just, just visualize it. Just visualize it and you'll know. You'll get it. Moving on to number eight and something more serious, Jessica Cruz and Simon Bass. All right, so this one comes courtesy of my fellow nerd host, Sasha. Jessica and Simon are both Green Lanterns who first met each other in Green Lanterns Rebirth issue one. The two worked to investigate an alien intrusion, which turned out to be a manhunter. And surprise, surprise, the whole event was a training exercise that Hal Jordan had orchestrated for the two of them to learn to work together as a team. And oh boy, did it start something. Now the relationship these two have is Pretty wholesome. They both became lanterns around the same time. They're both incredibly supportive of one another, and Baz is especially supportive of Jessica's struggles with anxiety. Their partnership is fantastic, and we can't help but fall in love with the idea that maybe one day they'll fall in love with each other. Although Jessica did recently kiss Batman, and it was kind of weird, but like, I'm willing to just forget about that. Because he clearly did. Moving on to number seven, Thanos and Hela. Okay, sure, these two are super villains and not technically superheroes, but hear me out, people. They're coupling would be amazing. Like a serious coupling, not just like the stuff that we actually have seen of them in comics so far. Now listen, Thanos was obsessed with Mistress Death. Hela is the Asgardian goddess of death. How have they not knocked boots yet? Thanos is a big sucker for romance. His actions in the 1991 Infinity Gauntlet comic are courtesy of his love for Mistress Death. He collects all of the Infinity Gems and then wipes out half of all living beings in the universe just to show her how much he loves her. And she still rejects him. The comic, which is brilliant might I add, a good chunk of time prior to its big conflict showing us how disappointed and angsty Thanos gets when death shows little to no interest in what he does for her. It's wonderful. <laughs> I mean, not for Thanos, but you guys, yeah. So why not love someone else who's all about death and nihilism? We're talking Hela, who rules over Nilfhelm and Hel. Now, in the comics, they've shared a kiss before, but their main mutual bond is the fact that they're both seeking out power. But hey, maybe they should give it another go. Get some power and get some love and talk about death and the fact that existence is bleak and sad. You know, it could totally work. Or is Thanos' obsession with his one true love death just too strong for him to cast aside? I mean, Get over it, dude. Moving on to number six, Black Widow and Scarlet Witch. Okay, so this one's a shout out to Lucy from Beyond the Screen and Top 5 Scary Videos. This one is solely a pairing derived from a desire to see the two of these characters hook up in the MCU. Now sure, it's a little bit of an obscure shit, but there is a whole lot of fan fiction online that screams otherwise, people. So, aside from them being like, totally hot together, why do we think this couple will work? Well, if we are looking at the MCU versions of these characters, you could argue that Natasha's cool, collected calm is something that 
that could go a long way in helping Wanda, similar to how she calmed down Bruce Banner in Avengers Age of Ultron. Wanda struggles to control her abilities, and Black Widow exudes confidence and control. Meanwhile, Scarlet Witch could very well be the one to help Nat chill out a little bit and enjoy life more in between saving the world and coping with the crippling responsibility that comes with that job. I mean, it's kind of all moot now since the MCU Natasha is dead as far as Endgame was concerned, and Wanda is running off to hang out in the Disney Plus series WandaVision with, obviously, Vision, unfortunately. So the chances that we'll ever see this ship come to light is pretty much slim to none. Really, I would just settle for just Scarlet Witch not being with Vision. I'm sorry, I just like, super subjective opinion here, don't ship it at all. Moving on to number 5, Hank Pym and literally anyone willing to love Hank Pym. <laughs> Hank Pym has the worst luck in comics when it comes to romance and just generally existing. He had a real rough period in the 80s when he became schizophrenic, transitioned into the superhero yellow jacket, caused a ruckus, went on a mission with the Avengers where he attacked a foe who had surrendered, got court-martialed because of that, then came up with a scheme to not be court-martialed and prove his worth to his fellow Avengers, but really it would have just put them in grave danger for no reason. And then when Janet objected to said plan, he beat her. That last bit is one of his most well known and obviously controversial panels, which led to a long time declaration amongst fans and pop culture aficionados that Hank Pym is a woman beater. And they're not wrong, but he also has a lot of mental health issues that were never really properly addressed in the 80s. Not making an excuse there, it's still terrible what he did, but. Yeah, whole picture there, just so you guys know. Now, for the most part, Hank has had a lot of problematic relationships, and while Janet is endgame for him as far as many are concerned, he struggles to hold on to any sort of romance in general. And recently, at the end of 2018, Tony Stark and Janet rekindled their relationship while Hank was busy being a skin jacket for Ultron and having his soul devoured by the demonic entity Devandra inside of the Soul Stone. Yeah. And I mean, if he wasn't having his soul devoured, he'd probably be really salty about it. Back in 1982, Tony and Janet got together when Hank was in prison after his whole stint as Yellow Jacket being court-martialed. So really, at the end of the day, all we want to see is Hank with anybody, and Hank happy in a relationship. Is that too much to ask? Moving on to number 4, Batman and Catwoman. Holy crap, why couldn't they just get married? Seriously. Honestly, at this point, we would just love to see Bruce Wayne in a long-term relationship with anyone. Sure, he's brooding and paranoid and what have you, but hell, that would make for an amazing B story. Bruce struggling to make things work in a marriage while being the goddamn Batman. Anywho, the history between these two dates back all the way to Batman issue 1, when Catwoman first debuted as the Cat. And right from the get-go, the two of them wanted to jump each other's bones. Batman literally says the line, I quote, quiet or Papa spank. I mean, yeah, it was the 40s but come on, that is pretty aggressive flirting right there. Then by the time Batman issue 15 rolled around, Robin was even calling out his caped partner for being into their cat-like foe. To which Bruce responded, Patience, my lad. You're too young to understand these things. I'm pretty sure he, he got it. Now despite this, the closest they would ever get to kissing, I mean him and Catwoman, not him and Robin, would be in 1966 in the Adam West Batman television series, which brought Catwoman back into the fray after a long hiatus prompted by the Comics Code Authority restrictions. Now minus a marriage between the couple on Earth 2 in the 70s, the two of them have just flirted a lot. Made out quite a bit got engaged, and then didn't get married. Full circle now. That being said, DC is releasing a new Batman Catwoman crossover series, so maybe there's hope after all for a permanent romance between these two. Or a long lasting one. Or maybe a marriage that would be nice. Up next at number 3, Steve Rogers and Bucky Barnes. Ah, Stucky. The shipping of Captain America Steve Rogers and his best pal Bucky Barnes is one that runs deep. Ever since Bucky returned as the Winter Soldier in 2005, there's always been a devoted group of fans who have won wanted to see them connect on a romantic level. Their backstory is so ripe with grief and loss and sorrow, and with Bucky returning as a villain, it made things so much more complicated, so like, obviously you want to see them hook up. Despite the villain thing, Steve still persisted, wanting to get through to his old friend who was now significantly closer to his age. And then came along their MCU adaptations. Steve would give up everything, including his life, to save Bucky, putting himself at risk on several occasions to try to save his friend. They connect on a level that no one else really understands. Being from the past, stuck in the present, in a world they never really felt like they fit into. Even if you don't ship them romantically, their friendship in both the comics and the films is something that's hard to not acknowledge as special. Hence why the ending of Avengers Endgame stung for many. Steve barely said a word to Bucky. But arguably, they're so in sync that Bucky just knew what Cap was thinking. 
They don't even need words, you guys. Remember, even when Cap had nothing, he always had Bucky. Oh, my heart. Up next at number two, Captain Marvel and Valkyrie. Sure, this is definitely a product of the hype that comes from shipping their MCU counterparts, which might I add, actors Brie Larson and Tessa Thompson have openly stated that they ship the hell out of their characters. But it's also a ship that could totally work, and one we'd definitely love to see happen both on screen and in panel. Both are strong, badass women who have had their fair share of struggles over the years. And both are hardened leaders, who arguably are stubborn as f which would make for such an amazing slow burn flirtation lead up slash chase story. I mean, how could you not be in for that? Just look at the fan art, guys. In. And last but not least, in at number one, Batman and Wonder Woman. Okay, so compared to our back cat number, this is a controversial pick. If anything, Superman and Wonder Woman are a more appropriate choice here. But A, they're super boring, because Superman, and B, those two have properly hashed it out, and Superman ultimately belongs with Lois Lane, as far as some people are concerned, despite being a colossal asshole to her during the Silver Age. Remember that? It was, it was pretty fun. Not for her. Batman and Wonder Woman have occasionally engaged in flirtatious behavior, but but like many of the couples on this list, they haven't given it a proper go. Minus that hot second in the 2003-2004 JLA storyline, The Obsidian Age, in which the two shared a spur of the moment kiss that they then pretended didn't really happen and then got weird about after the fact. But last year, while Bruce was engaged to Selena, he and Diana almost kissed in Batman issue 39 after the two spent time in a realm in which time moves significantly slower than our own, meaning it felt like they were in there for decades together. Now the two of them held back in a series of really sexy panels, with them noting that no, they can't. Not ever. Bruce declares his love for Selena, and Diana is all like, yeah, Steve Trevor, he's great. Sure. In the past, there's also been some serious tension between Selena and Wonder Woman because of Batman, creating a wee bit of a loose love triangle for the three of them. And on the flip side of that, in the early 2000s, in both the comics and the Justice League animated series, it was often implied that there was some sort of unspoken love triangle between Wonder Woman, Superman, and Batman. Regardless, the Wonder Bat ship is one that doesn't look like it'll set sail anytime soon. But imagine what it could be. I mean, based off of that, almost kiss, count me in. All right, there we have it, friends. Let us know in those comments below what couples you would love to see come to be a reality in the comics or in the MCU or in the DCU or in movies in general or in any sort of media, really. If you guys dug this video, you know what to do. Hit that like button, share it with a friend, and hey, if you haven't already, subscribe. We'd love it if you hung around some more with us. In the meantime, though, thanks for watching, friends. I'll catch you all in the next video. Everyone skips. They don't, they don't wait till the end. They're like, their sh just vomits everywhere. <laughs> Maybe just keeping that not for Thanos bit that I just said, not the the sputter that I just did. Hello, who rules over Nilfha? Ah. All right, let's try this again. Got that one down.